Often throughout history, war has inspired us humans to invent and engineer new ideas to turn the side of the war in our favour. Some of the inventions have been very successful, such as the atom bomb for example, but some of them stand out like a sore thumb because of their unique or bizarre design. So today we're going to be talking about the five of the weirdest war inventions throughout history. The Pageant Drum, also known as the Great Pageant Drum, was a massive rocket-propelled, explosive-covered decart designed by the British during the Second World War. Now, if you think that this sounds a bit mental, then you're probably right, because this thing was just too unstable to use in battle. The prototype was secretly constructed at Leightonstone and transported by night to the testing grounds at Westward Ho in Devon. However, once there, the secrecy surrounding the project broke out as the beach chosen as the test site was also a popular destination for holidaymakers. Well, that's not very smart now, is it? From the first test on the 7th of December 1943 onwards, every trial was witnessed by a large citizen audiences despite the DMWD's warning concerning the safety of the weapon. Now, to quote from a source at the time, At first, all went well. Pageant Room rolled into the sea and began to head for the shore. The brass hats watching through the binoculars from the top of the pebble ridge, then a clamp gave. First one, then two more rockets broke free. Pageant Drum began to lurch ominously. It hit a small line of craters in the sand and began to turn starboard, careering towards Clementansky, who, viewing events through a telescopic lens, misjudged the distance and continued filming. Hearing the approaching roar, he looked up from his viewfinder to see the pageant drum shedding live rockets in all directions, heading straight for him. As he ran for his life, he glimpsed at the assembled admirals and generals diving for cover behind a pebble ridge into a barbed wire entanglements. Pageant drum was now heading back towards the sea, but crashed on towards the sand where it disintegrated in violent explosions and rockets tearing across the beach at great speed. I mean, I mean, who just who just decides that this is a good idea to make? I mean, what what crackhead thinks that this is this is? Oh, you know what we'll do? We'll just make a fucking rocket propelled cart. Honest to crap. Now this next one, I, I I don't even know how to describe this. It's it's like one of those old cartoons. Now. The Krumlauf is a bent barrel attachment designed for the Sturmgewehr 44 rifle. It was developed for the Germans during the Second World War, and to top this all off right, it has a periscope. Now, this attachment enabled the weapon to be fired around corners. Its shape meant it could be used from within a tank as well to counter enemy infantry armed with mines or other anti-tank weapons. In use, it was found that the barrel attachment became distorted and quickly wore out from the pressure of rounds being fired. Also, the bullet suffer shattered on exiting the Krumlauf, although a failure at the time. The concept has actually been revived with some modern weapons, allowing the user to engage the enemy without exposing themselves. You know, I, I don't I don't even know what to say actually about this. It's 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 such a smart but such a shit idea at the same time. I mean This one is a banger, the harmonica gun. It was a form of pistol which was breech loaded with a steel slide containing a number of chambers bored within it and which were filled with projectiles. Most harmonica guns are percussion cab guns, although some designs exist for compressed air guns. The early example of one of these was created in Switzerland in 1742. According to Clive Scott Crystal in the following Raw God Home, Footloose in American Dream, and Louis A. Garavaglia and Charles G. Warman in Firearms of America West, 1803 to 1865, the slide gun was independently invented by a Mormon gunsmith called Nicanor Kendall in 1838. And it was from a gunsmith that Browning got the idea for his own harmonica guns, and when he moved to the area in which Kendall lived around 1840. Let's take a step back around 2,234 years ago, when the Greeks made a special weapon. What do you think it is? Wait, pause here and comment down below if you want. Well, it's a massive iron hand nicknamed the Claw of Archimedes. 
Although its exact nature is unclear, the accounts of ancient historians seem to describe it as a sort of crane equipped with a grappling hook that was able to lift an attacking ship partly out of water. That either caused the ship to capsize or suddenly drop it. It was dropped onto enemy ships which would then swing itself and destroy the ship. These machines featured prominently during the Second Punic War in 214 BC when the Roman Republic attacked Syracuse with a fleet of 60 Quinquiremes, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, because I don't speak Latin, under Marcus Claudius Marcellius. When the Roman fleet approached the city walls, under cover of darkness, the machines were deployed, sinking many ships and throwing the attack into confusion. Historians such as Livy attributed heavy Roman losses to these machines, together with catapults also devised by Archimedes. Now, I should point out that this one may or may not have existed. We don't know exactly if this even existed, I'll be honest. But it sounds it sounds like a right banging weapon, I'll be honest. The 2mm Calibri pistol. Uh, Battlefield 1 players or World War 1 history nerds of Austrian weaponry will know this one. The 2mm Calibri, also known as the 2.7mm Calibri car pistol, or 2.7x9mm Calibri, was the smallest commercially available centre-fire cartridge, patented in 1910 and introduced in 1914 by Franz Pnafel, an Austrian watchmaker, with financial support from George Grabner. It was designed to accompany the Calibri semi-auto semi pistol, or single-shot pistol, both marketed as self-defence weapons. Due to the weakness and inaccuracy of the firearm, the 2mm Calibri was advertised as a ladies' self-defence weapon that was small enough to fit inside a handbag. While not properly effective against a mugger if shot at the chest or limbs, it could potentially inflict some damage if shot at the attacker's face. The series and most weapons by Franz Pnaffel were discontinued in 1938. As with related firearm series, this gun is now a collector's item, with a thousand ever produced. It is notable for the firing the smallest center fire cartridge ever produced. Now, the gay bomb, number one. Because why the hell wouldn't you name it something like that? It was also called the Halitosis bomb, both of which were non lethal psychochemical weapons that the United States Air Force Research Laboratory speculated about producing. The theories that involved discharging female sex hormones over enemy forces in order to make them sexually attracted to each other. <laughs> the research and notion today is largely ridiculed for the bizarre idea, well, you're fucking damn right, it's a, it's a gay bomb. Like, what? It's not I mean, I mean, you know you're not doing well when you come up with a bomb that makes people gay as a weapon. Some body spray advertisers claim that their products contain human sexual pheromones which act as an aphrodisiac. In the 1970s, copulins were patented as such as products which release human pheromones based on research on rhesus monkeys. Subsequently, androstetinone, auxiliary sweat and vomodors have been claimed to act as human pheromones. Despite these claims, no pheromonal substance has ever been demonstrated to directly influence human behaviour in peer-reviewed study. And it's, it's, this, this is in the 70s, so I'm not entirely surprised that the Americans did this. I mean, like, just... Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was a pleasure to make. I truly love this. I mean, it's just such a fun topic, and I hope you enjoyed the informality of this with, you know, mistakes being made, laughing. I, I just thought, you know, I'd... Spice, spice this video up a bit to save the usual formal reading. Now please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Comment down below if you also enjoy the video if you want to make a suggestion. Or hop on to my Discord which I will leave the link, permanent link, down below in the description for you to click on and join my Discord server whenever you can. So that's all. Thanks. Have a good one.